Hello, everyone. How are you today? Please shout out your country. Let us know what country you are watching from. We love to hear um, how international our students are, right? We have a really big international group. Okay, so. Oh my gosh, I think my keyboard is going to die. Oh no, I hope that's not the case. Uh, hello, hello, welcome. Yeah, I think my keyboard is going to die. <laughs> oh no, it's like a wireless keyboard and I just got a notification saying it's gonna die. Uh, let me see if I turn it off for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Save the battery. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. So um, before we get into today's lesson, I just want to remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, you can also like me on Facebook and follow me on TikTok. So I know on YouTube and Facebook, people aren't getting all of the notifications. So um, if you want to know when I go live and when I'm posting a new lesson, please turn on the notifications. There should be a notification button um, on YouTube. It's like a bell. I'm not sure on Facebook what it looks like, but if you can turn on notifications, that way you'll be notified, um, hopefully, when I go live or something like that. Okay, so, oh my gosh. Okay, all right. So before uh, my devices die, let's just jump in to the lesson, okay? So um, we're going to be talking about um, five ways to express excitement, excitement in English. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about exciting things. Oh, hello from Sri Lanka, India, Peru, very nice. Tanzania, hello, hello. Okay, welcome everyone. So uh, here is our lesson for today, expressions for excitement, excitement, so exciting. Okay, so instead of saying the usual, I'm excited, aren't you excited? We're so excited. We're gonna learn some new expressions, okay? Very good, hello from Pakistan. Hello from uh, Vietnam, wow. Okay, so the first expression that we have is raring to go. Have you ever heard this before in English? Raring to go, okay? So if you are raring to go, this is a decided phrase, okay? Raring to go. Um, if you're raring to go, it means very eager, excited to begin something or go somewhere. Okay, you're very, very exciting, excited to start something or to go somewhere. It means you're raring to go, okay? We are dressed and raring to go, okay? So if you've got a party to go to, you wear your nice clothes, you get all dressed up. We are dressed and raring to go. We're so excited to go, okay? Very good. Oh, hello from Kansas City, very nice. And hello from Sri Lanka. Okay, the next one. After the project was approved, the team was raring to go. The team was raring to go. So this doesn't mean um, go to a place. This means begin something. They're excited to begin something. After the project was approved, the team was raring to go. Okay, we are ready. We are excited to start. Very good. Next one. You may have heard this one before. It's a little bit long, but to eat, sleep, and breathe something, okay? If you eat, sleep, and breathe something, it means you are extremely interested in that thing, 
because it is very important to you. So basically what this um, expression means is that you are maybe thinking about that thing or doing that thing all the time when you're eating, when you're sleeping, when you're breathing. It's totally a part of your life, okay? So eating, sleeping, and breathing are things that you do to live. Those uh, You need to do those things in order to be alive. So the thing that you're interested is like what you need to do to be alive. It's totally part of how you live, okay? So example, number one, I eat, sleep, and breathe golf. So if you really, really love golf, you play golf all the time, you watch golf on TV, um, you're always practicing, you're buying new golf equipment, you could say, I eat, sleep, and breathe golf. Very good. Oh, hello from Minnesota. Wow, you're very close to my hometown, Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, next one. He is very successful because he eats, sleeps, and breathes his career, okay? So why is he so successful? Because he loves his career. He's excited to work. He really, really enjoys it. He eats, sleeps, and breathes his career or his job, okay? It's a part of him. Very good. Oh, hello from Nicaragua. Very good. Okay, what is something that you eat, sleep, and breathe? Let me know in the comments. Uh, for me, maybe I eat, sleep, and breathe hmm, English. <laughs> I love teaching. I love teaching English in particular. So I'm doing that all the time. I'm always thinking of new lessons. So I eat, sleep, and breathe teaching maybe. Okay, next one, fever pitch, fever pitch. Okay, so the meaning is a state of extreme excitement, extreme excitement. So when I hear a fever pitch, what I imagine, um, so if you know like a fever, oh, I have a fever, I'm so hot. So fever, like we can say um, uh, feverish is like very hot. So it could mean like excited, right? You're, you're so excited. And then maybe pitch is, I always think of like a tent. It reaches like the maximum like this, a fever pitch. Okay. Oh, tight, tight win. Hello. It's okay if you're late. We just started. Uh, we're halfway through, but we just started. Okay. Ah, I like this one. I eat, sleep, and breathe learning English. Very good. I eat, sleep, and breathe teaching English. Okay. Very good. So, uh, fever pitch. A fever pitch is a state of extreme excitement. Maybe you're excited, excited, really, really excited. It's kind of like the peak the peak of excitement, okay? So examples, excitement in the stands had reached a fever pitch. So we often use the word reach with fever pitch. The excitement reached a fever pitch, okay? So excitement in the stands so stands usually mean, um, we can say stands or bleachers, the audience of an event, usually like a sporting event or something. Um, those are the stands. The stands are where the audience sits. So excitement in the stands had reached a fever pitch. So maybe the game they're watching is very, very exciting. It's the peak of their excitement, okay? Uh, we could also say the political campaign was at a fever pitch. So we can also use was at or is at, was at a fever pitch, okay? The political campaign, um, 
maybe it starts off and it ramps up slow. Well, not that slowly, but it ramps up and then it's at the max excitement, maybe just before an election, for example, the political campaign reached a fever pitch. Okay, the next one, um, on the edge of one's seat. Okay, on the edge of one's seat. Have you heard this expression before? It's very, very useful. Um, we use it a lot, I think. Um, so the meaning is very excited and giving one's full attention to something. So uh, if you have ever watched um, a very interesting movie, for example, a movie that has lots of twists and turns, a very entertaining movie, maybe you, you feel yourself getting closer to the screen, you get on the edge of your seat, oh, what's going on? Um, or if you're at like a, a baseball game or soccer game, football game, you get closer and closer, as close as you can, and then you're on the edge of your seat because you're so excited, okay? So the example I have here is the football game went into overtime. So uh, the football game, if the score is tied, if they have the same score, um, they have to go into overtime, which is like extra time. And everyone was on the edge of their seats. So we can change this to the plural. Everyone was on the edge of their seats, okay? Very good. The next one, the movie kept me on the edge of my seat. The movie was so interesting, it kept my attention. It had my full attention. I was so excited, okay? Very good. Next one, this is kind of the opposite of excitement. I thought I would add this in here because it is really practical to use. So dial it back, dial it back. So um, if you uh, have like a like central heating system or cooling system at your house, um, sometimes it can be a dial like this. So if you dial it up, it's very, very hot or very, very cold. If you dial it back or dial it down, we can say either dial it back or dial it down, it loses the intensity. It becomes cooler or um, warmer depending on the season, okay? So, uh, oh, Aliawan is here, hello. The announcement of the presidential election kept me on the edge of my seat. Me too. That's a great example. Very good. Okay. Oh, I like this one too, really quick. I eat, sleep, and breathe traveling. Very good. Okay. I am on the edge of your seat to attend your session. Oh, very good. So when we're talking about our own excitement, I am on the edge of my seat. Okay, nice job. All right, so uh, so dial it back, dial it back. Reduce the intensity of something, okay? So if you're really, really excited, maybe um, you start, your voice goes up in pitch, you get a little louder, you're very, very excited. Okay, okay, we understand you're excited. Dial it back, okay? So if you're in a situation where you shouldn't really show your excitement so much, we should dial it back, okay? So uh, I'll read my examples. I can see that you're excited, but I think you should dial it back a bit, okay? So dial it back just a little bit, okay? Very good. So. I can see that you're excited, but maybe this is not the time or the place to show your excitement. So I think you should dial it back a little bit, calm down, okay? Uh, this one is really important. This is what my, my father taught me <laughs> when I was growing up. When negotiating prices 
or anything, you should dial back your excitement so that they don't think you are desperate, okay? So here you can see that dial, we have dial it back, but we can um, uh, rearrange it, dial back your excitement, dial back something or dial something back, okay? So um, for example, my father always taught me, like when you are house hunting, when you're house hunting, um, for example, you see a house that you really like. I want to buy this house. But if you show your excitement, wow, this is the perfect house for me. I need this house. Oh my gosh. Then um, your uh, the people who you are dealing with, they might overcharge you. They might overcharge you. You love this house. So I will maybe a thousand dollars extra. Okay, that is not good. So we should dial back our excitement. Like, oh, it's nice, but mm, I don't know. Okay, very good. So those were all of them. So I want you to practice writing your own sentences. So we have raring to go. That means you're very excited to go somewhere or start something. Um, we have to eat, sleep, and breathe something. This means that you um, are completely consumed with that thing. You love it so much. You're so interested in it that um, it's part of your life, okay? Fever pitch is the peak of your excitement. The highest point of excitement is a fever pitch. On the edge of one's seat is means uh, it means you're very interested in something. You're, you're, it keeps your attention. You're leaning in. Oh, it's going to happen next. Oh, my gosh. And then dial it back or dial back something. Okay? So this means to reduce the intensity. Okay? So in this case, we're talking about excitement. Dial back your excitement. Calm down. Okay, very good. So if you can write some sentences in the comments, let's share some of them. All right. Ah, thank you for the suggestion. Please do a session on congratulations and other occasion wishes and greetings. Very good. Um, let me take a picture of that <laughs> so I can remember it. I'm terrible at remembering things. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay. Ah, my mom taught me too that I have to dial it back in front of a seller. Yes, that is really good advice. Dial it back, um, act not that interested, not that excited when you're trying to buy something. Oh, hello from Guatemala, okay. Next Saturday, I will join English speaking class, but I can dial it back for that day. Very good. Yes, so if you're very excited to join the English speaking class, maybe you can dial it back and calm down. <laughs> okay, very good. I hope you enjoy that. Excellent, excellent. Uh, let's see. Oh, hello, hello, welcome. Yeah, that always happens to me when I buy clothes. My mom always tells me to dial it back and don't be at a fever pitch. Very good. Yes, we shouldn't show our excitement that much when we're shopping, okay? Oh. After approval of the sports fixture, I was raring to go. Nice example, very good. You're excited, yay, let's do this. Okay, ooh, Brenda, when it's my son's turn to perform on the stage, I was on the edge of my seat. Great example, yes. So especially if it's your own child, oh, I'm very proud, I'm very excited. So 
you're on the edge of your seat, your son is on stage, he has your full attention. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Maybe when bargaining, you should dial it back. So true. Ah, okay. I was in a fever pitch before the announcement. Maybe we would say, um, I was at a fever pitch or my, my nerves or my excitement were at a fever pitch before the announcement. Very good. Ah, please do a session on speaking about the past, especially using would, have had, etc. Of course, I think I have some lessons on YouTube. So if you if you search like past on my YouTube page, I think they should come up. Or if you use like would or have, probably they they will appear. But I will do some more in the future as well. Uh, we are raring to go to the graduation ceremony. Very good. Yes, very excited to go. Oh, greetings from Guatemala. Hello. Okay. Oh, yes, Ali, I remember your suggestion. I will be working on it very soon. Don't worry. Okay. Uh... Oh, I like this one. I eat, sleep, and breathe football. Very good. That means you really love football. Excellent. I want to eat, sleep, and breathe. Then maybe we don't need a two here. I want to eat, sleep, and breathe English. Or I want to eat, sleep, and breathe studying English. So maybe after this, a noun or a gerund would work. Okay. While the teacher was teaching, I dozed off for a split second. Very good. So doze off means sleeping briefly, a, a short sleep. And a split second is like a very quick time. I like that you use that, very good. I didn't know what she said, so I wish she would not call on me. Oh, very good, yes, I hope she doesn't call on me, don't call on me. And I reached a fever pitch, very good. I like your use of all of the, the recent words that we've learned, excellent. Um, I was on the edge of my seat before the announcement. Very good. So when we use, um, when I put here on the edge of one's seat, this one means like um, we can change this word to the person who is excited. So if you're talking about yourself, I was on the edge of my seat. He was on the edge of his seat. Okay. Um, let's see. When I watched the movie Me Before You, oh, I was on the edge of my seat. Very good. It sounds like an interesting movie. I eat, sleep, and breathe thinking of new quizzes for my FB group members. Bree, do you like them either? Oh, yes, you are doing very well. I, I love seeing, um, posting the the quizzes and like the the comments in the Facebook group. So if you guys don't know, we have a Facebook group for members. So you guys can post quizzes or maybe if you have questions that I'm not able to answer because um, I'm uh, if I'm busy, you can post questions to that group and then other members can help you too. So um, it's free online English lessons. That's the Facebook group. Um, we also have the American English Club. Um, that is mostly like anything goes in there. Okay, we'll just do a few more, a few more. Ah, so our group name is Free Online English Lessons, I think. <laughs> I think. So, um, yes. Oops, you are welcome. 
Okay, free online English lessons. I think that's the group name. Ali, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can post questions, quizzes there, um, and then other members can um, help you too, and I also can. Okay. Uh, when my crush said that he loved me, when my crush said that he loved me, or when he told me that he loved me, I was on the edge of my seat and I said, I loved you too, okay? Oh, very good, very good. Romance is in the air, okay. Raring to go, is that a casual expression or more formal? So um, this is more informal, I would say. Um, you can use it in uh, certain different situations. Um, it's not formal, but it's not that casual either, okay? Very good. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay, so let me bring back my face. Ah. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for watching today's lesson. I think my keyboard is about to die because I didn't charge. <laughs> I didn't charge it. Um, so if you guys want, I know um, the notifications have not been going out to everyone. So sometimes you'll miss, ooh, sometimes you will miss a lesson if you don't get a notice notification. So maybe periodically check back to the Facebook page and the YouTube channel and see if there's anything new for you to watch. Um, thank you guys so, so much. I'm working on a ton of lessons. Um, it's, a, it's been a pretty busy month, so I apologize for some inconsistency, but I hope that I will um, have lots of new and interesting lessons for you very, very soon. Okay, very good. Ah, really quick, um, short of and run out of, are they the same? So um, if you have a shortage of something, it means you don't have enough. Run out means you are slowly um, losing something, right? Like I, my pen is running out of ink or my pen ran out of ink. So run out in the past tense, I ran out of something. That means there is nothing left. But if you're short on something or have a shortage of something, it means you have a little bit but maybe not enough, okay? So a little bit different depending on the context. Okay, so thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope that you can um, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page, follow me on TikTok. I, I promise I will post um, consistently, <laughs> okay? Thank you very much, and I will see you very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you.